थैंक यू चेतन नाउ वेल आफ्टर दिस इंटरकैप्सल फ्रैक्चर नाइक फीमर दी कॉमनेस्ट कॉम्प्लिकेशन गोज मोर दैन थर्टी फाइव पर्सेंट इन सम केसेस इट इज अ नॉन यूनियन सो मे आई रिक्वेस्ट डॉक्टर ब्रैड पेट्रीजर टू इनलाइटन अस ऑन द नॉन यूनियंस एंड लेट प्रेजेंटेशन इन यंग एडल्ट डॉक्टर ब्रेड थैंक यू वेरी मच एंड थैंक यू वेरी मच दर्स चेयर्स फॉर हैविंग मी And we'll just pull up the slides. Do we have a? Where's the this is the pointer. Where is the changer? Change on here. Okay. Okay. So let's talk a little bit. So I mean, what are the issues? And we just heard about it um, uh, for intracapsular neck fractures and. And you know the issues, and we just heard about the issues. You can see that there are issues of malunion, issues of nonunion, and issues of avascular necrosis. And then, obviously, there are combinations of both nonunion and AVN, or malunion and nonunion. And these are things that we have to try and address. I'm going to start by talking a little bit about the nonunions and the AVN stuff that we see after fixation. Uh, but there's also late presentations that we might not see um, who come to us uh, without fixation. In order to do this, I want to really look at the literature. Being from McMaster, if I don't talk about the literature and evidence, then uh, I, I get demoted. So um, we're going to talk about it uh, right now. There was a really nice symposium put together in injury about a, a year and a half ago, and Mohit Bandari is my uh, chairman, and, and Gerard Slobodian works now at um, Baltimore Shock Trauma. Um, and they put a really nice symposium on the complications in the young femoral neck fracture. And the reason for that is Mohit has done, as you all know, a trial of elderly hip fractures, but Gerard is looking to start a trial of DHS versus um, uh, canny screws in young hip fractures. And so some of these papers are preambles to this trial. And in this systematic review, they looked at young patients with femoral neck fractures to try and ascertain what is the actual overall incidence of non-union AVN. We commonly hear that, oh, it's up to 35%, 10%, but we don't know what the totality of the literature says. And so what they wanted to look at was, what do all of the studies say? Now, I don't expect you to read this, mainly because when you look at all the literature, it's very confusing. There's retrospective level four evidence, there's consensus opinions, all the way up to prospective stuff. And if you look at all of the literature, there's about 41 studies from 1964 to 2012 looking at about 1,500 patients. So you have to ask yourself, does what we know about femoral neck fractures, is it only derived from 1,500 patients and our own practices? And when you think about all the people with femoral neck fractures in the world and in our respective countries, that's not a lot of numbers to actually tell us what's going on, right? So, but if we look at the overall outcomes, I'm gonna figure out how to work this. Uh, if we look at the overall outcomes, overall it seems there's approximately a 20% reoperation rate following internal fixation for young femoral neck fractures. 14% incidence of AVN, about a 10% incidence of non-union, and about a 7% incidence of malunion. So you can see that different studies are going to have potentially different rates, but the overall rate of all of the included studies is approximately a 20% reoperation rate. So we can go to patients and say, look, for every person I operate on, two of you are going to need another operation within a year or two for either AVN, non-union, or a combination of both. And we can talk a little bit about what goes into this. If we look at combined femoral neck shaft fractures, the actual incidence of reoperation for the neck itself surprisingly goes down a little bit. 
So the isolated femoral neck fractures have a higher incidence of reoperation roughly. In, but femoral neck fractures are still a bad actor because they're difficult to deal with. So what are the factors that go into this reoperation rate? And we've heard about it a little bit. Displacement, the timing of our fixation, and the reduction and subsequent fixation. So these are some of the things that, that may or may not be modifiable. And timing, I mean, when do we get to the operating room? Now, if we look at displacement, again, for all comers, it looks like the reoperation rate is approximately 18% for displaced fractures and around 7% for undisplaced fractures. So you could effectively tell people your risk of having a reoperation is double if your fracture is displaced versus not displaced. And it doesn't matter, again, what implant we're talking about. Purely we're just talking about displacement. Again, AVN about 14 to 15 percent with displaced versus 6 and non-union 10 versus 5. So on average, looking at the totality of the literature, a displaced fracture necess tells you that you're going to have a double the chance of a reoperation, double the chance of AVN, and double the chance of non-union. We knew that, but it's nice to get fairly concise figures from the totality of the literature. Now, what about timing? Now, Chitan has talked a little bit about some of the timing, and Peter Giannoudis, um, who works uh, still in Leeds, uh, did a an, an, uh, systematic review on the timing. And if you look at the trials, there's about seven studies that have looked at timing of fixation from around 1984 to 2012. So when we talk about timing, we talk about cutoffs of six hours or less, 12 hours or less, and 24 hours or less. And it looks like, and you've heard this already, it looks like timing doesn't play as significant a role in the development of avascular necrosis as we would have thought from previous. Displacement plays a role, but timing necessarily does not. So these are forest plots of the studies of which there are only two that look at avascular necrosis and operating within six hours versus after six hours. In this trial, there was an effect, meaning they found less AVN within six hours. In this trial, there is no effect. So the line of no effect is one here. When you pool that data, there is apparently no effect of timing of less than six hours. The same holds true for 12 hours. What I would like to point out, though, is that we are dealing with a population of approximately 200 patients in these trials. Meaning, we are making treatment decisions based on 200 patients in two trials to tell us that less than six hours doesn't play a role. And I would, I would ask us to question that data, even though the best available evidence tells us right now that it may not be important to get there within six hours. And similarly, with 12 hours. Similarly, with 24 hours. So the rates of AVN in the literature are not affected by us fixing things within the first 24 hours. So obviously surgeons then say, well, when do we need to fix it? Where's the cutoff? Clearly there's a cutoff somewhere. We all see it. And I don't know where that is. If I have a young patient who's less than 60 or 50 or 60 or 65 or so who comes in, I'm not going to fix it in the middle of the night at 2 o'clock in the morning. But we have trauma rooms that run every day, and I am going to put them into the trauma room for the first case and get them done. I'm not going to make them wait longer than 24 hours. And that's just me telling me that. That's my own, what I would argue is common sense. But the literature, we don't have that answer. And the question becomes, where is it? Is it 6, 12, 24, 36? There may be some signal. Some studies have actually shown there may be some signal. And that's why people are starting the hip attack study, including the group at Sanchetti, which is looking at early, early fixation uh, less than 12 hours, I think, right? And then uh, versus over 12. 
in a prospective randomized fashion to see if in fact we can decrease complications just by getting people into the operating room. But the best available evidence would tell us right now we may not have to get there within 6 to 12 hours, but I tend to. Now what about non-union? Well, it looks like when you look at this data, there are two trials, George Hadikavich here and the manager study, that looks at less than 24 hours or over 24 hours, suggests that our non-union rates may go up if we don't get to them before 24 hours. So there's some numbers that we can, we can say, okay, AVN may not be a reason, may not be up, but it looks like non-union may start to go up significantly if we wait beyond 24 hours. And that's from the best, you know, available evidence. But again, what's the best available evidence? The best available evidence is two trials with four event rates and two event rates in each group. Right? When we talk about papers, we always quote the paper, but when you actually look at it, six patients had a complication here. So again, we're basic we're we're we're, we're establishing our practice based on, you know, six event rates, which I would again tell us that we should be looking at this literature and questioning things. What about the reduction? We've heard avoid varus. We've heard oh lav mic. Thank you. Can people hear me with this? Can people hear this okay? Yeah. So we've heard of avoid, avoid varus since Garden spoke to us. Avoid varus. Garden's alignment index told us avoid varus. Mark Swinkowski tells us avoid varus. So I'm not going to belabor the point of varus. Varus biomechanically drops down the femoral head and gives us a biomechanical disadvantage. And we heard a little bit about DHS versus canny screws. But what we don't have is the data looking at DHS and canny screws in young patients. The FAITH trial, which was looking at DHS versus cannulated screws in elderly fracture patients, was just published and just, and just um, uh, uh, put out at the OTA this past year. And this was a trial from all over the world um, uh, looking at DHS versus canny screws in 1,100 patients over two years, randomized. No difference in outcome rates at two years between the two. Now this is for elderly fractures. There was a 20% roughly reoperation rate between DHS and canny screws between the two. So right now, based on best available evidence for elderly patients, it's dealer's choice. But interestingly, there wasn't in excuse me, increased AVN rate in the DHS group. That resulted in more operations. But the overall reoperation rate between the groups was the same. So maybe there is something to this AVN thing in the DHS, which is actually kind of surprising in my, in my estimation, because biomechanically, people are suggesting that we should be using the DHS for young intracapsular fractures. So, what are the options if we develop non-unions? So, essentially, valgus osteotomy is one of the ones that we're using in the North America. Uh, Myers osteoplast uh, osteoplasty, and then obviously arthroplasty. Myers quoted about a 72% union rate with their quadratus pedicle flap. So the quadratus taken off and put up into the femoral neck. Baxi published about a 70% union rate. We'll talk a little bit about the valgus osteotomy in a second. And then there was this nice symposium put out by the IGO, actually. I don't know if any one of these guys is here today. Uh, looking at their uh, evidence for the internal fixation of the muscle pedicle bone flap. And found very good, again, high incidence rates of unions with the Myers osteoplasty. There are people who argue that the Myers graft doesn't necessarily work that well. And so a lot of people don't tend to do that. And um, it seems that our teaching at our place is looking more at the valgus osteotomy for femoral neck non-union. Why? Because oftentimes with the femoral neck non-union, you're getting collapse and you're getting varus. 
And you can't deal with the collapse in the varus with the Myers quadriceps plasty. You can deal with that looking at a valgus osteotomy. But when you look at the evidence of a valgus osteotomy, there's only six retrospective level four studies. And again, they look at about an 88 to 100% union rate. But again, we're talking numbers in the terms of 8, 30, 13, 11. Very difficult to ascertain. But the union rate apparently is quite high with the valgus osteotomy. So when you develop AVN, what are the options? Well, first we have to look at collapse or no collapse. If there's no collapse, you can do some core decompression. So in the young patients, core decompression is a generally a low morbid operation with arguably 70% survival. A vascularized graft, 60 to 90, tantalum rods, a rotational osteotomy, and arthroplasty is always an option. And when they collapse, most people suggest that the only option is arthroplasty. So as we get better with arthroplasty for non-unions and AVN, I can tell you our threshold for put going, putting a total joint in is very low. And it all hinges on whether there's collapse and whether there's avascular changes. But at home, if there's avascular changes, most commonly they're going to get an arthroplasty. That's the way it goes. People are just aren't doing Sujioka osteotomies and all that sort of stuff. Although it's all in the literature, just not doing it. Now, at the end of the day, arthroplasties are costly. And these other mechanisms are all viable and potentially doable, especially if people can't afford the arthroplasty and they're really young and you think there's some chance of getting the femoral head survived. Now, what about the late presentation? Well, Sandu classifies, and I'm talking about people who've never had internal fixation. Now, Sandu classifies these as stage one, two, and three. Essentially, stage ones are fresh and the, there's a minimal gap with a big head or a big proximal piece. Twos are more sclerotic, no AVN, and threes have AVN. And Anil Jain actually put forward uh, in, in the IJO in 2015, a systematic review, looking at a general treatment algorithm for the neglected femoral necks. So less than four weeks, he says they're usually type stage ones and you usually can fix them without anything major. Four weeks to six months, and again, D Dr. Jane has broken them up into three months and stuff, but essentially four weeks to six months you can fix them as long as there's no AVN, so as long as they haven't moved to stage three, but they're usually stage one and two, and you can fix them as you normally would, but you generally have to open them, and they may need bone graft. Why? Because the gap at the fracture site is bigger, and you're going to be generally opening them to get it up. And in this case, it's dealer's choice, whether you need a valgus osteotomy, depending on where the neck is, whether you would use a Myers graft, whether you would use cancellus and fi add fixation. We don't know between the two what is better. There just isn't any prospective studies looking at that. And over six months, usually they're stage three and developed AVN, and they're going to get a replacement. That's the way it goes. So just in general, really quickly, I won't take long. This is someone who came to us, 52, young woman. A woman, she's addicted to narcotics. That's a lot of my patients. Poor compliance and follow-up. Here's the fixation. Good or bad? It's not bad. What's that? I didn't put a derotation in. I usually put a, a wire up to stop the derotation when I put the screw in and then pull the wire out. Uh, but it's not bad. You know, you get a little bit of overlap of the fracture. There's no real varus there. And here's the post-op, and there, there she comes back. So this is kind of a no-brainer, right? What are you going to do with this, non-union and AVN? You're going to replace it. There's nothing else to do, I would argue. It's already gone into the femoral, into the acetabulum, and you're going to do a standard replacement, which we did. Nothing fancy. Don't need any sort of fancy equipment, just a standard uh, replacement. We did a press fit. I'm not going to get into the whole press fit uh, versus cement argument or hemi and, and all that sort of stuff right now. But here's another case. This is one that you might see, right? You see a bit of malunion and non-union. So I'll show you, 
just quickly that the CT also shows that there's non-union. But if we go back, you know, this is one of the reasons why Myers may not be working in everybody. When you see shortening here, we see loss of that length, we see loss of that offset, plus a non-union. So if you just go do a pedicle graft, the question becomes, you know, what's going to happen? Are you just going to graft it? No, you've got to reconstitute the offset and reconstitute the, the angle. And one of the ways to do it is by doing your osteotomy. Calculating it out. We typically use a blade plate, although it doesn't matter. You can use any construct that you want. The point is to get it up into valgus. And here's just an intra-op picture. Uh, curette out the, the fracture site, da 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 do your osteotomies, um, put up the blade, and then do your shift. Restore the offset, so it, it looks like you shifted it a lot, but you got to restore some offset, restore that angulation, and get that valgus. So there's the sort of the end result, and you can look at the, the end result based on what you did. This is about a 120 degree angle blade plate. That's pretty standard stuff. Uh, using that blade plate to do it. Although you can use a DHS, you can use other constructs. At the end of the day, it doesn't necessarily matter, but we find that the blade plate works. I've done that for the subtrope non-unions as well. And just one more quick one. Here again is the, uh, the united fracture, but again, it's the malunion that's shortened, they lost their offset, they're complaining of pain. And in this case, sometimes, you know, just because you have that picture, sometimes you just need to get the screws out and get them out of the trochanteric bursa, and then people are happy. But at the end of the day, you still lost some offset. But this is going to be a standard replacement when the patient comes to it. So in summary, the issues are malunion, nonunion, and AVN. Everything hinges in terms of treatment on whether that femoral head is viable. If it is not viable, there's a very low threshold for us to move to arthroplasty, even in the young patient, because it's standard and true. And if you want to do something to, uh, to try and maintain that femoral head, then one would argue a valgus osteotomy, because you're commonly not seeing a perfectly placed femoral neck with a non-union. Uh, but at the end of the day, it's, it's fairly much a uh, dealer's choice when it comes down to it. So thank you very much. Thank you.